Okay, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm Emily Schlemutz. I'm the senior curator at the Wisconsin Museum of Quilts and Fiber Arts, and I'm very pleased to be joined today with by Eric Wolfmeyer, Audrey Essere, and Libs Elliott. Welcome. Um, and all, all of you uh, listening in. So thank you for tuning in. We are recording this. Um, so it will be available on our YouTube page at the end of the program, as well as on our Facebook page. And we do have some listeners tuning in on Facebook. So for those who are on Facebook, uh, my director will transfer the, any questions you might have over to our chat. Um, as, you, as the presenters are going through the slides, feel free to uh, ask questions, although most questions Questions will leave towards the end. Um, this exhibition, well, all three artists are a part of the exhibition Counting Threads. Um, can everyone see my screen? Sorry, I'm getting some notices that you might not be able to. Your screen is black. Looks like a black screen on my end, Emily. Yep, it's awesome. just for me too. Okay. Let's see, I'm gonna try again. Sorry about that. Yeah, that looks like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Is that better? Still just a black screen. It says that you've started screen sharing, but there's nothing shared. Hmm, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. What about that? Nope. You were there briefly um, when you first started the correction and then you went away again. Okay. Stop share. There you are. Whatever you did. Well, this <laughs> is it. all of oh, us. There we go. Oh, we went away again. No, no. Now I'm black again. Okay, sorry. Um, one second. What if I go? Is that better? Can mm. everyone see? Nope, it's just not wanting to share. Okay. Um, Julie, do you want me to get you tried? Yeah. If you don't mind, I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah, I don't mind at all. Hang on just a moment. Okay, can you all see the screen? Yes. Yes, now it's working. Great, I'll just drive. So um, <laughs> as you all want to advance the slide, just say next slide and I'll just push it forward. Thanks so much, Audrey. You're welcome. Oh, uh, so sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, I, yeah, as I mentioned, um, all three of these artists are in the exhibition Counting Threads. Uh, Counting Threads brings together 17 contemporary fiber artists from throughout the United States, Australia, and Canada who all uh, integrate math in some way in their practice. So it's really about the intersection of contemporary fiber art and math. Um, the exhibition, if Audrey, if you could go forward, please. The exhibition is made possible by some generous sponsors, including the Lenore G. Tawney Foundation, the Wisconsin Arts Board, Cedarburg Grafton Rotary Club, St. Kate the Arts Hotel, Hilgendorf Memorials, Rock of Ages, and a private donation. And as I mentioned, it includes 17 contemporary artists, including Black Girl Math Dick, Meg Callahan, Anna Chupa, Contemporary Geometric Beadwork Team, Libs Elliott, Audrey Essere, Jackie Gehring, Caroline Hadley, Veronica Irvine, Dr. Sean Kimber, 
Thomas Nauer, Ari Lee, Sarah Nishira, Michael J. Ross, Diana Tamina, Eric Wolfmeyer, and Carolyn Yackel. And some of these artists are more mathematicians and utilize fiber in their practice and to support their formulas or their equations, and others are quilters, such as we have today, and you know, utilize math in their in their daily work. So I'm really excited to hear about um, Eric. Audrey and Lib's practices today. They're amazing artists and they've been incredibly generous um, agreeing to do, join us for this program. Uh, so without further ado, I've sent them a couple of questions and ahead of time and they are going to share slides um, in response to those questions. And we're gonna just do it sort of a round robin style conversation. Um, so I'm gonna let turn it over to the first question. If we, can you advance please? Um, and we can meet the artists, uh, Audrey, Libs, and Eric. And we'll just meet them through the question. So what drew you to fiber art? And I always like asking that question because I think sometimes it's familial connections, but I just like hearing what, you know, what kind of led you to this path. Yeah, so thanks, Emily, and I'll kick us off. Hi, I'm Audrey Essery, um, and the first thing that drew me to fiber arts um, or quilting was really an invitation from my now mother-in-law. Um, this quilt that I'm sharing on the screen here is a Hunter Star quilt, which was my very first quilt, um, and the pattern here was developed by Jan Krenz, and so this quilt is very special to me because it is my first quilt, um, but I think in looking at this piece, there's still things that I see about this piece that um, show through in the quilts that I'm now making today. And one of those things is really high contrast colors and high contrast precise piecing and design. Um, so starting with this quilt, um, you know, these are just a two, two color, two fabric quilt. Um, and a lot of this piecing was intermediate piecing, which I think is still something that I'm known for today. Um, this quilt that I'm sharing here is one of my recent works. Um, it's a series that I've been working in called the Watercolor Quilt Series, and this is Watercolor Study number six. Um, this quilt is really special to me and um, illustrates one of the things that draws me to fiber arts is really being able to play with color um, and that precise piecing. So while I'd been involved in arts for a long time, like I can remember my entire life just making things and always being creative and picking up different arts and crafts, but when I found quilting, it really satisfied my artistic um, desires because I could be very specific with the color by picking that textile um, and be very precise with piecing as well. And that's really just continued to cascade to all of my quilts. Um, with this quilt, Ultraviolet Radial specifically, I dyed all of the fabrics that are in this quilt. And so really kind of going further down the rabbit hole of being able to pinpoint exactly the color that I want and that exact precision piecing, um, as well as thinking of kind of large scale compositions or thinking outside of a traditional block based design. I really feel like uh, quilting checks all of those boxes for me artistically. Um, so that's kind of what has drawn me to quilting as um, my artistic uh, niche of choice. Um, Libs, what about you? Okay, I'm going to try not to tell you an entire life story here, um, but uh, I grew up in a house that was attached to an antique shop. Um, my dad had an antique shop and we would spend weekends all going together to the auction barns to buy antiques to fill up his shop. And so often when we went to the barns, um, you would walk in and there would be these beautiful heritage and heirloom quilts hanging on the walls up for auction and he would buy those for collectors and you can see it's hard to tell in this photo but there's one hanging um used as a tablecloth on this table here it's got a really nice baptist fan um uh quilting on it and so as a kid i was i was supposed to go into the shop and dust i was allowed to hold and touch all these beautiful handcrafted objects. My dad would tell me all about the history of where they were made. And um, what was really cool is that they weren't just 
put on shelves, we used them. So I got this real connection to um, objects that were both beautiful and functional. And I was always just really drawn to the textiles because I had them on my bed and we used them as tablecloths. And so that was my first earliest connection to textiles. And, um, and then as I got older, I got really into fashion and punk rock. And because I grew up in a small town, um, the idea was sort of like, if you want to look different or be different, you're going to have to make it. So, you know, we would make hand make all these little zines and magazines and I would hand stitch things. And so that was really my first sort of connection to making things with my hands and being really drawn to textiles. So Audrey, you can move. Yeah. So then, you know, as I got older, I went to college and I studied weaving and natural dyeing. Um, and I really learned a lot about the structure of, of textiles and fabrics. And then I took a break from it all and got into advertising as a job. And then I finally, I was like, I really need a creative outlet. So I took a quilting class and this was back in about, well, 2008. And I had missed it so much. It was really wonderful to start working with textiles again. And so I made this um, double wedding ring quilt. It was a class taught by Johanna Masco, who also lives here in Toronto. And it was a really wonderful experience to cut up fabrics and put them back together and use um, techniques and learn different ways to, to piece fabric together. Um, so that was my very first challenging quilt. I'll have to say this is applique double wedding ring. So it's not, there's no curved piecing involved in it. So it was a really cool experience. And then by the next year, um, I started to design my own quilts that I, I was looking for my own creative voice and working very much in a silo. I did not know that there were quilt guilds or people <laughs> who got together to quilt. So I was just sort of working in my own little bubble and I made this quilt design. And you can see based on all the tiny little squares that I did not understand quilt math. So it was my first foray into, I have no idea what I'm doing. And then gradually working towards getting a better grasp and understanding of quilt math and how geometry works and how to, to put things together and construct quilts. So, um, so that's really my first, uh, early days of quilting. And I just, I just love uh, connecting everything together. I guess Eric, I'm up. Uh, you're uh, up. Thank you, Libs. Thank you, both of you, Audrey and Libs. Um, so I did not, as requested, have a picture of my first quilt. Um, I have one, but it was just, I didn't have time to get it up here. Um, so in 1990, I graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts as a first generation college student uh, from Washington University in St. Louis. And I had studied with Joe Deal, who is uh, the late Joe Deal, who is known uh, in the new topographics movement and did a lot of landscape photography in the West. Um, and I remember him describing some of my large scale portraits that I did in college as maps of the face. And that will come into play later, I think, when we look at some things I've been working on. Um, so I didn't have a picture of my first quilt. I will tell you that I started quilting in 1997. 97, 98, I was living in Northern California and was vacationing in Sisters, Oregon, which some of you may know um, how that becomes relevant very quickly. Um, however, I was there adjacent to, but not during their um, well-known quilt festival. I bought my first pattern to make a quilt for a baby who is now a um, very established uh, journalist in Hood River, Oregon. Um, and uh, I think I was very fortunate. There was a lot of dumb luck and serendipity that my first piece was a paper piece project. It was like a drunken log cabin pattern that I bought. And that was such a great way to learn how to quilt um, because it showed me that pretty much anything is possible, which is what's always drawn me to the medium anyway, which is that literally the infinite possibilities. So here I have a picture of my second quilt, if that's any indication. And I don't know if the picture reads well enough to show you that essentially it was sort of a political social commentary about um, Ur urbanization and urban sprawl um, that I was certainly seeing a lot of in Northern California at the time. And, and now I pretty much see it everywhere. Um, that was a paper piece project. That was my second quilt. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I just like, well, I, I guess I can do this. I don't know. Um, and then next step, of course, we have the goddess herself, Denise Schmidt. Her, um, her article feature in Martha Stewart magazine came out right around the same time. And when I saw 
her junk in log cabins I, and everything else that she was doing, I thought, oh, okay, I can I can do this. I, I can I can get into this. Um, so I made a first, like the quote you're seeing there, the second quote I made as well as many of the early days quilts were all gifts. And what I started seeing happening was people would have this surprisingly enormous response to my work and I didn't really understand it and I really still don't. But um, I thought, well, I like doing it and people seem to enjoy it. So I guess I'll just keep doing it. And here I am uh, 25 years later and I'm still doing it. So thank you, Denise Schmidt. And uh, thank you for all the women in the uh, quilt shops as well as the quilt guilds who supported and encouraged me and gave me things like rulers, um, gave, gave me things I, I didn't know I needed. Um, but I think that I needed quilts more than I ever imagined. And I didn't, I didn't know that I needed them, but now I do. Thanks, you guys. Um, I love seeing the picture of your father in the antique store, uh, Libs, that's beautiful. Um, do you prepare and sketch or do you get right to the design wall? Uh, we have some of the sketches, some sketches in the in the exhibition. I think that's an interesting sort of relationship between, you know, sort of that preparatory work. Uh, but I just wanted to hear what you guys do. OK, I will start. So since about 2011, I've been using a programming language called processing to um, generatively render um, and random like randomly render sketches so the code i could get into it but i won't get too deep into it um, the code takes the parameters that i put into it and, and you can see that on the left hand side you can see it's just actual code and then the output for that code is a visual image um, so it, what's fun about this is i never know exactly what's going to pop up on my screen um, it takes away pressure from my brain which wants things to be symmetrical and organized and it allows some chaos to happen on screen so i love that process in itself um, audrey you want to move to the next one so then what happens from there is that i'll have a render and in this example this was a commission for someone um, so i'll have this digital render and I work completely on computer until I start to actually um, sew. And so I'll play around with colors and um, the pattern that the code gave to me. I might actually tweak things and clean things up a little bit um, in Illustrator so that I can uh, make things balanced and let your eye flow the way it should. So this one is like uh, with the commissions, I would often give people you know, four or five different options to choose from. And then, and then I print it out on a piece of paper. And I, I don't, the code doesn't give me any math or fabric requirements or anything. So um, often you can see I've got all kinds of little notes on my sketches where I'm trying to determine how I'm gonna piece each block together. And then I work row by row and I literally fold the piece of paper and have it sitting by my machine as I work on each block. And then I'll mark it off as it's finished. And often I won't even look at the progress. I'll just keep sewing the blocks until the top is done. And then I'll open up that top and you can see on the left hand side that's a was a commission for um, Mark Zuckerberg's sister a few years ago. So it's just this fun uh, process of going from computer and digital into the physical space. And that's sort of the thing that I've become known for. All right, sorry, Liz, I didn't mean to cut you off there, okay. but uh, I thought you, I thought maybe you had one more slide that I was going to flip to. Um, so my process um, is similar to Libs in that it does kind of start inside a computer. Um, and so my designs in this series specifically, um, the quilt offset radial on the right hand side was part of or is part of the counting threads exhibit. Um, and sometimes, uh, well, these designs are foundation paper piece arcs, um, and then the arcs are put together uh, not 
unlike how a drunkard's path block would be assembled. Um, and so the quilt on the left offset was the very first quilt in this series. And when I made it, I didn't realize that I would be <laughs> end up working in a series of quilts of, um, you know, high contrast radiating wedges. Um, but once I started designing these, I just felt like there were a lot of design possibilities when it came to this concept. Um, and so these designs do kind of start in the computer. And these images here are screenshots from EQ. So I did begin designing these quilts in EQ, and I have now moved to primarily um, designing in Adobe Illustrator. Um, now, this is the original thought for the design. Um, but when I got to my design wall, I realized that I did need to make edits. So while my design starts in the computer, uh, it's often not, doesn't end up exactly like that. Um, and so if I flip back to, this is the quilt on the right-hand side, um, offset radial, these are the original di digital ideas. And then this is how the quilt ended up turning out. So I do a lot of decision making on color and layout and possible omissions in the design once I actually get to my design wall. And when I'm thinking about auditioning colors, I'll often pull fabrics much like I have on the right hand side, where I knew I would need a gradation of 13 colors and each of those colors would touch both black and wasabi on the right. So I laid things out to make sure that all of the colors that were touching each other would be kind of cohesive in the palette together um, and still continue to work. And then the photo on the left-hand side just shows how I set up my workspace when I'm getting ready to sit down and do uh, paper piecing on an arc like this. I do kind of pre-cut many of the wedges so that um, I know the size and shape is correct and accurate. And then I really do clear my workspace so that only what I need is on my workspace so that I can work very efficiently. Um, and you can see my little scribbles on my paper piece templates here. That's so as I'm piecing, I don't lose track of where I am. So I do a lot of pre-planning so that by the time I get to the actual assembly of the quilt, I can sit down and listen to a podcast or turn on a show that I've watched a million times and just kind of enjoy the process and get to work. What about you, Eric? Um, well, I actually just stop and think if I'm, I sketch or what I do, but I guess I sketch because I don't own a computer. Kind of tells you where I'm at. Um, I don't own a computer unless you count my phone. Uh, so I do sketch, you can see the one on the, on the left there for Made It Your Here, that's a piece that's in the exhibit, um, that was all um, a hand-drawn, hand-colored sketch on a piece of paper, uh, graph paper, and uh, so that's clearly a piece that I've completed, and then on the right is just a prospective quilt um, idea that I have inspired by neon and just sort of the kitschy pop art fun of having a giant quilt that says nothing but hi. Um, I, so yeah, I do sketch, although I would tell you honestly that, and I hope it doesn't sound in any way pretentious, but the truth be told, um, most of my quilts come to me in a vision, sort of already complete. So for me, my job is to figure out how to bring them to life. Um, so I just tend to sort of see them in my head and think, well, okay, now how do I break that down into Make, you know, making it peaceable. Um, and, you know, certainly things can change along the way. Um, I think of the quilt as a conversation. I think of it as a relationship. Um, so in the next slide, if you want to peek at that, um, it's a project that I've been working, it's about a four or five year long project I've been working on that's currently being hand quilted. It's a 12 by 16 foot portrait of my mother made of one inch pieces. And while most people assume that I use some sort of computer, the only aid that I had was essentially a half scale color print that I made of the, had made of the original photograph the quilt is based on. So here you see that I block off a six by six section of it and I have trays upon trays of pre-cut one and a half inch squares. And then I will lay out each individual square um, just with my eye. Um, so I guess I call it like a manual or hand pixelated process. Um, so, that, like I said, is currently being hand quilted. And if you want to skip to the next slide, it sort of shows you 
kind of a progression of how the Bougainvillea uh, looks as I'm building it um, square by square. And then the next slide shows you some more of my progress. Um, that was a project I started on Christmas Day, December 25th of 2019. And I finished it about a year ago. Um, I finished it in four sections, most of which of one you can see behind me there as I'm sewing in my current studio. And the one to the right I'm standing next to is in my previous studio space where I actually started it. And I just got word from my quilt broker um, a few weeks ago that it is half hand quilted. So it will all be hand quilted, stitch in the ditch um, on a one inch grid. Um, so the quilting itself will take about two years. I'm hoping to have it done by next fall, 2023. But to answer the question, I definitely sketch and I keep an idea board um, of ideas that come to me. So. Thank you, those are beautiful. Um, so there's a kind of two parts to this question and it's a little, uh, the, so the, the exhibition really is about the intersection of fiber and math, but it also more broadly is really about sort of crossing disciplines and, and the interconnections between disciplines. And so um, I guess I just wanted to ask like how and why you cross boundaries and, and how that enters into your practice. Um, and maybe it's, it's also maybe kind of personal for me, um, curating, I find allows me to access a lot of my different interests. And so I think that's true probably also for quilting for for all of you, but if you could just kind of talk about that and how how that kind of sort of the why, the why, the why you do what you do. I'll kick us off for this question. Um, well, um, I would say I have uh, an academic background that is math related. Um, and so I've always just kind of found that to be a strength um, of mine. Um, and so I always am interested kind of in that precision. So with math, there's one answer, <laughs> lots of different ways to get there usually, but kind of one right answer. Um, and so I think that just kind of fits with my personality and kind of the quilts that I design. Um, and so I have started thinking about ways that I can manipulate um, the current series that I'm working in. And this quilt, which is pictured on the right, Mobius Radial, is based on the Mobius Strip, which is um, the impossible shape. Um, and it was founded by two German mathematicians in the mid-1800s. And when I start designing, um, you can see on the left-hand side, uh, these are four digital illustrations of generally the same idea, but it, um, you might notice that um, in these kind of small pointed sections, the amount of black to white varies between each um, version of this design. So as I'm manipulating that in Illustrator, one thing that I'm doing is um, creating that image and then going in and measuring the parts and saying, how wide is this little skinny white strip here? Can I even piece that? Um, and thinking about, you know, none of my pieces feature applique in any way. Um, everything is pieced seams. Um, and so my brain is always thinking, okay, I have this awesome image here and the really interesting design, but can I actually piece that? Um, and so I think leveraging the technology to audition ideas is really powerful. Um, and, you know, putting pencil to paper is important as well. So in um, this quilt, Neon Radial, you can see on the right hand side is a mini that um, I called obtuse radial, which has the same kind of shift in the background. But these lines are things that I digitally audition just by drawing with my finger on my iPhone. And at this point in time, I wasn't designing in Adobe Illustrator yet. So in this instance, I had to print out a 60 by 60 paper version of the quilt. And I did that printing on eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. 
and I taped everything together. And then I was, you know, moving it around and crawling on top of it on the floor with multiple rulers taped together so that I could put pencil to paper and draw these lines in that I then ended up cutting apart the 60 by 60 inch paper quilt and using it as its own foundation paper piecing template. Um, and so I think that leveraging, you know, those details and um, your measurements and leveraging what you think you can complete where there's a will, there's a way in terms of quilt construction. Um, but definitely I would say there is a strong tie between technology um, and the final quilts that I do end up making. Lips? Yeah, so I feel like uh, I have the same sentiment as far as the technology and quilting goes, but unlike you, math is not my strong suit, but I love the challenge of it. Like you said, like I love the challenge of looking at something digital and thinking, how am I going to make this? And how am I going to put it together? And how am I going to cut cut up the fabrics and get them to fit together the way it looks on my screen. Um, and also I've had a long standing um, interest in digital art. Um, and so, you know, when I work with this code, it's in collaboration with a digital artist named Joshua Davis. So he shouldn't go unmentioned in this because he's the one who really kicked this off for me. Uh, and I love the idea that code itself and computers and technology are very impermanent. Um, and constantly changing and evolving uh, on, you know, in our, in our computers. But I love the idea of taking that one snapshot of something that's code and then physically making it into something that's going to last and that's going to like go out in the world and have a journey. I have so many quilts that I've made. I don't know where they are now, but I think they're all hopefully all having fun. Um, so I love that idea of taking something that's really impermanent, like code and something that's on your screen and making it into something that's going to last a little bit longer um, in physical form. Um, and, you know, the challenge with with this code, it's OK, you can go to the next one, too. The, the crazy thing about this code is that I, it's limitless. So even though there is one answer for math and one set of specs that I've got um, in in processing, I can get so many iterations. And every time it renders an image, if I close that image, I'll never get the same image again, right? It's always going to be remixing. So the, I love the randomization of that. And the fact that it's limitless, it can also be overwhelming because then I have to decide, okay, what am I going to make into an actual quilt? What deserves my attention and my time to be made real? Uh, so that's the big challenge. And um, it's something I've learned to kind of hone. And I do have folders full of digital renders that I'll go back to that are, you know, five or seven years old. And I'll pull from those and I'll decide, okay, now is the time to make it into a quilt. And so something like this, like this Delaunay triangulation, this is actually animated um, code that bounces around your screen. And you can, I pull screenshots from it. And then I took this and I was like, how am I going to make this into a quilt? And so rather than printing it on fabric I, or on paper, I um, projected it on a wall to scale. And then I used freezer paper and I traced all the lines and then used the freezer paper to construct it. And then just chose like, you know, played around with colors to create facets um, and more of a 3D effect. So yeah, it's, it's a fun process for me going from digital to physical. Okay, so it looks like it's my turn. So um, speaking of should not go unrecognized, thank you for that phrase, Libs, I'll borrow that. I um, want to be sure that I mentioned that uh, quilting for me is a spiritual practice, and it is a one of great collaboration that I could not do in any significant or long-term way without the anonymous and albeit invisible, essentially, um, hand quilters that I work with um, indirectly. I have two brokers that uh, are my point of contact. Um, one in Missouri and one in Indiana, and they put my quilt tops uh, in the hands of Amish women who quilt them in between gardening and canning and cooking and all the, the other things that they do. Um, so I want you to know that all of my work is a product of that collaboration, um, albeit um, one that is uh, a sort of a veiled collaboration. 
Also, I want to clear, clarify something that most people assume that I um, do this for a living. I do quilts. I, I make quilts to live, but I do not make quilts to make a living. Um, I have a full-time job. In fact, two hours ago, I was unloading someone off of my bus in their wheelchair at a doctor's appointment. That's what I do for a living right now. I drive a paratransit bus. So I took the afternoon off um, to do this. And so that was nice to have a Friday afternoon off. But um, no, I uh, I do have a maintain a studio um, and I um, am there pretty much at any time that I can be that I'm not working. Um, I have a very generous husband who does the most of the domestic duties uh, such that I can be free to spend as much time in the studio as possible. So quilting for me is a, is a, is a spiritual practice. Um, I would say I'm horrible at math. I might even say that I maybe have even a math, uh, what would you say, learning disability, those were terms that we had when I was growing up. But um, I had always wanted to be an architect and um, I did pretty well at Algebra 1. In fact, I really enjoyed it my freshman year of high school. And then when I started progressing into math, I did not enjoy it or do well. And I don't know if that was my fault or maybe the teachers or what happened there, but I really went off track and uh, I do not consider math my strong suit. However, um, I learned when I was 50 years old, uh, my father was a very, very successful musician and songwriter. And over the years I've noticed there seems to be a very strong relationship between music and math. And so somehow I feel that um, my work is informed by um, the math of music, um, and I'm always listening to music in my studio. Um, my work is intersectional with things that, uh, that I love, and my inspiration comes from everywhere. So the quilt that you see, Parallel Universe, which is also in the exhibit, um, was literally inspired by this random Instagram ad that popped up in my stories that you see on the left. I have no idea what it was for. Even at the time, I didn't understand what was being advertised, but I love the, the pattern. Um, so you can advance the slide if you would, please. I forget what's next. That's just an image of me. I mean, speaking of math, like part of it's just mapping out the quilt and understanding how it's going to be put together and what do I need and how many pieces. And a lot of times I, well, I don't know, I, pre cutting is kind of dangerous because you're committing to something. You're really committing to like, oh, this is how it's going to be. When in fact, sometimes things will change along the way and then you'll have all these cut pieces that you don't really need. But um, I guess that's as mathy as I get. It's just proportions and size. Most of my work is uh, I aim for it to be about 90 by 90. I do have some colossal work that spans uh, 27 feet in length, but most of my quilts um, are 8 by 8-ish so that I can basically pin them on my walls um, and photograph them relatively easily. The ones larger than that get kind of hard to manage um, and record because uh, I don't have huge high walls. That's one of my goals before I die, but whatever. Um, the next slide shows that maybe that quilt was inspired by uh, that random Instagram ad, but how can we say that it wasn't as equally inspired by my original um, mentor when I was a kid? I pulled a book off the shelf in our meager little Lutheran day school library about Frank Lloyd Wright, and uh, really that really lit a fire in me. Um, so how can we say that there aren't influences of architecture, which is one of my, um, was my first career goal, uh, which got derailed by my lack of math expertise. Um, uh, but it's, I still love architecture and look at it and visit it every chance I get. Um, what's the next slide? I think nature. Yeah, nature is another huge inspiration. I try to spend as much time in it as I can, but I'm often in my studio. so. I guess I spend time in nature vicariously through my work. Um, I just finished a series that I'm still sort of unsure about, um, but it's it's about the four elements of air, fire, uh, earth, and water. Um, I haven't finished air yet. I got a little sidetracked, but you can see here where the kind of color and, and spirit of those pieces come from. But if you advance to the next slide, you see they really actually come from uh, weaving, which is another huge inspiration of mine. Um, if you're ever feeling like you need some ideas uh, start looking at weaving because they're very uh, can translate very well to to quilts they're very culturally um, so architecture weaving music um, nature uh, tile work so if you advance to the next slide forget what it oh it's painting so when I go to an art museum I always look at painting that's what I'm most drawn to and sometimes my inspiration kind of I, I'll finish a piece and then I'll see something 
just out in the world and I think, oh my gosh, there's such a strong relationship there. And that's the case here with this Ensor painting that one of my art um, gallery friends in New York posted on his site. And I thought, wow, to me, those those two things are sort of somehow that his painting and my quilt, it's like they came from the same place. They're at least first cousins. I don't know how or why I had never seen that painting in my life, but when I did see it, it really spoke to me. And the same is true with the next slide. Um, that's an example of a quilt I made called Blue Eyed Sun. And uh, I finished it and then I realized that they had torn the building down right next to my studio and it exposed this tile work, which was inside the building that I'd never seen before. And it was just really odd to me how similar my quilt was to that tile work. And again, this is like reverse inspiration. I'd already made the quilt and then I saw this, this tile right outside my studio and I thought, well, there it is. So <laughs> maybe it's some sort of environmental osmosis. I don't know, maybe it's just, um, like I said, quilting for me is a spiritual practice. I don't really know where this, where it comes from, but it comes from inside. And I think it sometimes it comes from elsewhere. Thank you. I'm going to ask a question that I'm sure you guys get asked quite a bit um, and forget this question for a minute. Um, how long do your quilts actually take you? Like, because um, Eric, it seems like it's a very time intensive process, but. Yeah, I'd say it takes, for me, I would usually say about a year um, from the time that I make it to the time that I hand it over my, my hand quilters. The hand quilting process usually takes about six months total. Um, so I always just kind of average a year. Um, but then, of course, some of the bigger pieces have taken two and now maybe up to four or five years. Audrey and Libs? Yeah, um, so my quilts really vary from quilt to quilt. I I heard Eric say he usually works in pretty large scale, uh, 90 by 90. Um, my quilts, I don't have that type of consistency with quilt size or piecing complexity. Um, so recently I have been working um, in a series that I have photos coming up of called the Aura series. And um, three of those quilts have two seams, but they're two seams that make an 80 by 80 quilt. And then the quilting is the intensive uh, part of that study. Whereas um, like one of my smaller watercolor quilts, um, I could make probably in a weekend. Um, and I think for me, my husband would probably say my superpower is focus. Um, whereas when I'm really interested in a project, there's nothing that will stop me <laughs> from sitting down and piecing and, and working. And, um, I work in focused, uh, bursts of energy. So while maybe I haven't pieced anything for a month, um, I've been dyeing fabric instead. And then, you know, I'll go back and I'll have another peak where I'm, you know, focused exclusively on piecing and I'll piece several quilts. Um, and so I think, you know, my personality lends itself to be very focused in those um, short bursts of creative energy. Um, and I think that that's one of the ways that I'm able to produce the quantity of quilts that I make per year. So I didn't really answer your question because I vary so much on the scope of the project that I'm working on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my quilts, I think, are this, it's the same way. Definite bursts, um, because as you'll see in the next, with this next question, I'm juggling a lot of other things. So when I do get time to sew, um, I try to focus on one project, although <laughs> I have multiple projects. Eric, I feel like Eric is really good at, this is the project he's focusing on, and he does it, and he makes it, and even if it takes you a year, Eric, you're like, this is the only thing I'm working on, and I'm not going to get distracted, whereas I'm constantly juggling. But so something like the triangle quilts that I showed earlier, those triangle quilts, um, I've standardized the sizes of them, the size of the blocks. I've got a die cutter. So those ones, I don't make them as often now, but if I do get a commission or something, I can usually make a top um, within 40 hours. Um, but then like the quilt you'll see at the end of the slideshow, 
Uh, I've been working on, I'd like to say I've been working on it for a year, but it's in, been in my studio for a year um, and it's a lot more intense piecing. So yeah, it really fluctuates. And I don't make smaller quilts. Um, I'll, I, I'm always making bed size or larger size quilts. And sometimes I do wish like, why am I not making smaller wall size pieces, at least as studies. Uh, yeah, I'm I mean, big. <laughs> working small is such a benefit. You get to audition ideas and yeah. you know experiment with a mini, a mini size quilt or a small scale quilt it can be such a benefit to yeah. kind of getting an idea out of your system and seeing, do I want to make this now large? Do I want to commit? Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely something I'm moving towards for sure. So, well, that's a good um for uh lead yeah. into how has your practice changed over time and what new ideas are you working on currently? Yeah, so I'll kick off this question. Um, I think it's interesting to see how has my practice changed over time? The quilt on the left offset is the very first quilt in the series and then now Mobius Radial, which is maybe number 16 or 17 in the series. I think you can still see there's a lot of similar DNA in those ideas, but really starting to challenge the idea of what does it mean to be a radial quilt, um, starting to play with the dimension. Um, I picked uh, Mobius Radial for this example because um, it's still a black and white or charcoal and white. Um, as an example. So I'm still me. I'm still very drawn to these high contrast um, designs. But in terms of how that practice has changed, I think, you know, when I made the offset quilt, I was already, you know, several eight years into my quilt journey. I started quilting in 2000, well, no, 13 years. Yeah, 13 years. I uh, started quilting in 2005, and this quilt offset was made in 2018. So I think a lot of my workflow was already ingrained um, when I started creating original quilt designs. And now this is um, a more recent uh, quilt in my series, Crescent Radial, which again, you can see I'm continuing to play with dimension um, and even still working in two colors, um, but definitely emphasizing kind of the width of those wedges and the, the shapes and proportions and dimensionality. Um, and this quilt is quite large. It's 80 by 80. That's huge for me <laughs> um, because I usually, my comfortable quilt size is somewhere between 48 by 48 and 60 by 60 is what I would say is kind of my sweet spot. Um, and then in terms of what I'm working on next, these quilts um, are my Aura series, which is new in 2022. And I have one behind me as well. Number four is behind me. Um, and so you can see the first two quilts on the slide are quilts that have two seams. Um, so you can see the um, center ring that's pieced into one very large back. So I'm hand dyeing all these fabrics. Um, and then the grid that you see that looks like four individual quarter circle blocks, that's actually completely done with quilting thread. So the quilting is so dense that the thread literally shifts the color of the entire section of the quilt. Um, and it's very closely illustrated in the fifth um, quilt in the series, where you can see the entire bottom half of the quilt is shifted by that neon yellow thread. Um, and so this is maybe more simplified compared to my radial quilts in terms of piecing difficulty. Um, although I would say, um, you know, I'm very slow and steady when I'm stitching these seams because any wobble in um, sewing those circles would be able to really easily be seen because the piecing is very uh, simple in terms of number of seams. Um, but if it doesn't come across that I am a bit of a perfectionist, which is something that I know and accept about myself, um, I would say, you know, these quilts 
kind of illustrate where my mind is right now, which is very excited about creating texture and colors that are not available in commercially available solid fabrics and really sort of expressing, uh, expressing myself that way and seeing kind of how quilting is going to influence the color of the fabric underneath. Um, so that's where I'm headed as of October, 2022. <laughs> I think I'm up next. I love those. Those are a beautiful shift from what you've previously done into this new territory. And the, yeah, the quilting is beautiful. Thanks, Libs. Um, so I'm one of those people that <laughs> took up quilting as a way to relieve stress from my day job and then eventually shifted into doing it for a living. So um, I have sort of two parts to my creative practice. One part is doing industry related work like designing um, quilt patterns and teaching classes and designing fabrics for a company um, and doing commercial work like uh, this commission. I had um, a collaboration with Absolute Vodka back in 2017 for um, Absolute Canada. It was a limited edition bottle here in Canada. So I started doing this, I want to say about 10 years ago, where I started um, working rather than just doing uh, commissions and having a, a job that I went into every day. I eventually quit that job and started doing, <laughs> started doing this. Um, and you can go to the next slide. Um, so yeah, and here's like some fabrics that I've designed. So I've been designing for Andover fabrics for a few years and then Figo fabrics. I do block of the months on Patreon um, and design a lot of quilt patterns. The challenge is I do all of that to support, to financially support uh, my family and <laughs> to support the art practice part of it. Um, but it is a real challenge to juggle both of those things. So I think I'm reaching this point where I am trying to balance them out and be able to spend more time on the passion projects that, um, that I wanna make purely for the love of, of making art and do more shows and ex exhibits and, and whatnot. So it is a challenge to balance it all plus raise a family, um, but it, it's working, you know. Um, so if you want to go to the next slide, I'll show you what I'm doing on the creative side of things. So this is a real shift from my previous work where I was working mostly with triangles, half square triangles, and doing these really graphic and bold, um, but very fairly tonal um, quilts. Um, so this is cellular automata. So it's also code um, written by Joshua Davis. And it's actually an animated uh, piece of code that the cellular automata mathematical <laughs> code is dripping down the screen and he pulls renders from the code. So sc basically screenshots. And he sent me about a thousand, not kidding, a thousand different screenshots. And so we've narrowed it down to uh, a series of quilts, digital renders that I would like to make into quilts. Um, and if you wanna to go to the last slide here, I'll show you so this is the first one. I would like to make this a series, but this is the one that spent the last year in my studio. You can see I'm really close to finishing it. Uh, and on the left-hand side, I have, it's a, I, I, I've done it all in Illustrator. So uh, in my Illustrator file, it's to scale. So my Ill Illustrator file is actually 88 inches and I've drawn shapes over top of each color so I can see what size I need to cut everything out at and I've labeled all the colors I need to cut and I'm just slowly working. I mean this entire quilt is pieced um, so I'm slowly chipping away at it. That bottom corner is just teeny tiny um, foundation piecing where I'm doing uh, three-eighths of an inch squares for all of that. So it's been a challenge um, <laughs> but I would like to make this into a series uh, so that's where I'm at right now. This is number one of hopefully a few. It could take a few years, but ideally what happens is I end up with, you know, a, a series of quilts where I can do a show and really showcase um, this work. And I do think it's a huge departure from the code-based quilts I've done before. Um, and so I'm excited. It's been a 
completely different challenge to work on this. So that's where I'm at. Eric, how about you? Those, those are really beautiful. Those congratulations. Keep Thank going. You. They're great. I enjoy watching the, your progress. So sure. um, I was going to say too, like I mentioned that my quotes generally take a year, which might lead people to think that I make one quote a year. But I would say that consistently for the last 25 years, I've made on average about four to five quotes a year because obviously my part doesn't take a year. So I just keep moving on to the next idea, the next project. Um, but I would be remiss if I also did not mention that in terms of why I do this, I really wanted to, to stress, um, I had the good fortune of 10 years ago traveling to China and uh, one of my travel mates was uh, Louisiana Bendolph. And uh, we both had quilts in an exhibit that toured China um, for a year and then was uh, toured in the U.S. for another two years. And the thing that was so amazing about meeting her was our backgrounds could not be more different. Um, but on multiple occasions, uh, she and I were both brought to tears uh, by realizing how much um, quilts meant to each of us in, in much the same way. And that is, is summarized by simply saying that we quilt to be free and that quilting is our great, great liberator. So I think of her and I think of her story and my story and why we quilt isn't always obvious um, to people, but it comes from a very deep and personal place. Um, so I always get emotional, I'm sorry, but I do. Um, so I think about that. I wanted to make it really clear that quilting, I quilt to be free. It's, it's the one place in life that I get to do that. So the more I do, where I'm going with it all is I'm, going, I'm headed towards quilting nirvana. Um, each step along the way, I'm, I'm freer. I'm freer. So I'm sorry. Um, but I, I, I love this work so much. And it has meant so much to me. And I, I really am so thankful for the opportunity to be able to share it with people and for it to, to move people in whatever way it does and in whatever way it speaks to them. Um, so again, that's that's where I'm headed with it, is I just am looking to pare down my work and get always bring it back to the essence of what it is and how it erupts from within me and how I can manifest it and bring it into a physical being. I swore I wasn't going to cry. God. But um, some stuff I just can't help it. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, this piece, Monarch, is inspired by a uh, second to third AD um, tile design from that I saw at Mayo Clinic when I was a patient there briefly, thankfully. Um, and it has spun out into this design called Monarch, and I think Monarch will have a, a first cousin that I will also make. And then the final slide is an image. Um, the next slide shows um, where I started, which was with her mouth, um, on Christmas of, 20, of 2019 and where I ended, um, which was this kind of a mock-up there of all four panels joined together electronically. Um, that is a 12 by 16 uh, foot portrait of my mother, um, which is currently being hand bolted. So that will be coming to me um, soon. Uh, so even though it's a piece I've already finished, it's not quite finished. And so of course I put the binding on and then the hanging sleeve and hopefully one day it'll be hanging someplace where lots of people can see it and enjoy it. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Um, I, you've been getting a lot of um, support in the chat. And I think, um, you know, sometimes what I love about these is that, you know, we see our quilts in, in museum exhibits or wherever, but it's nice to see, nice to meet you in person and like get to hear your story and Audrey and Libs. I think it's just, it's always powerful to meet the maker behind what's what, you know, the art. Um, so thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, so, oh, and I know it's a vulnerable experience. <laughs> I think you. it is. And I think for all of us, it's emotional. You're putting your love and your soul and your energy into making. And Eric is right. It's freeing. It's one of the only things that in your life you can control or you have complete control over it. Um, normally, I'm the one who cries. <laughs> I manage not to in spite of a photo of my dad. So, I, yeah. Just and sure. sharing it is vulnerable too, yes, because yeah. that's, you know, by the time you're ready to share something, you've already invested a lot of yourself Everything. into that piece. Yeah, um, and so 
thinking about what we put out there on Instagram or on a website and thinking about the reaction um, from everybody and taking all of that in and thinking about uh, what what does that mean to share share the work, I think is important to acknowledge. Yeah. Um, Emily, were there any questions either from the Facebook live stream or in the chat that we should answer? Uh, I haven't. I, let's open it up for questions now. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. And um, we have a couple of minutes. We can um, ask them to the to the artists. You guys are getting a lot of love. It's I, I hear wonderful presentation and sharing about yourselves. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. And I, I concur. So thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you taking the time and joining us over this lunch hour. And um, to everyone in the audience, it's been really wonderful to see the three artists together. Um, I know some of you guys knew each other, a couple of you guys knew each other before this, but um, I think I'm always impressed by the quilting community and the friendships that are found formed through it. And you can just tell that you guys are friends and you're, you have each other's back. And that, that really, I think that really shows and it's really, it's powerful. So I'm, I'm, I appreciate it. Um, yeah. Emily, thank you for putting together such a beautiful show. It's really exceptional. And I'm so thrilled and honored to be a part of it. And I wish that every, we had time for everyone to be on the panel because it's such a, an amazing group of people that you brought together. And, and that is a, a real skill and a real talent and speaks so much about who you are and what you bring to the table. So thank you so much. Thank you. And Eric, you did have one question. Um, so what exactly, uh, da, da, da. I think, so Rosa, I think, I think we're gonna, um, maybe if you could rewatch it and if, if you wouldn't mind asking Eric personally, um, that question, um, but yeah, there is, there's just been wonderful, some wonderful responses to this, to the dialogue. Um, thank you, Rosa. Yeah. And as I said, there is, is going to be posted on YouTube, um, right after the program, uh, we'll download it right away. So thank you so much. Oh, and Libs, what programming language do you use? Um, I use a language called Processing. You can go to processing.org to um, find out all about it and see uh, what it's all about. You'll notice that there are a lot of artists using it right now to make generative artwork um, and selling um, digital art via NFT space. That's a whole um, new, new era we're in. So yeah, check out processing.org to learn more about it. Oh, someone wants me to talk about the quilt behind me. Uh, this quilt was um, a commercial piece I designed for Holt Renfrew, which is a high-end department store in Canada. It was for their holiday campaign last year. So I don't have a pattern for it. I sold the design to them or licensed the design to them. It's actually a digitally printed quilt. I had given them a quote for a pieced version and they were like, oh, we'll just print it on fabric. So it's been printed and, and someone quilted it. Um, so I'm kind of relieved that I didn't have to piece it to be honest, <laughs> but it's a really fun, beautiful piece, I think. Thank you. Um, okay. From Heidi, one more question. Eric, I'm sorry I missed the answer to this without a computer. Can you share more about how you accurately transfer the photographic images um, into your quilts? Yeah, so I just go to, a, so I have a, they're based on a you know, photograph that I took and then I, I take that to a print shop and they'll make me a half scale. Um, so like I, my first fit, the thing I did like that was a self portrait, it was six feet by eight feet. And um, I just had a black and white half scale with a million, it would be three by four. And then I actually gridded that one off by hand uh, into half inch grids. And then my final project, of course, they're one inch squares, but yeah. So I just go to a print shop and um, the portrait of my mother, they made me four um, sections of that. Um, and they this time they gridded it for me, which was super helpful. Um, but yeah, it's, it was like $250 to get the color prints out, but it was a great investment. Okay, I think that's it. 
thank you guys so much. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna sign us off, and I really appreciate it. I'm gonna share the chat too. I'll I'll download the chat so you guys have it, and you can kind of see through see the questions and also the responses. So, thank you guys.